Good afternoon, everybody. We have a special day today. After the horrors of the Holocaust and World War II, many Jewish refugees displaced by the loss of homes and their families immigrated to the United States to start anew. Although they came with hope of a, of a new beginning and a better life, all of the memories, history, loss, and despair could not be put aside. As the survivors settled in Cleveland, including my parents, they discovered that other survivors in the area also had similar experiences and goals. They established friendships, shared their past, and a special kinship grew. A new family formed for those who really, whose real families had perished. They were able to share their Eastern European ways, which were strange to the Americans, strange to American Jews and non-Jews alike. They shared their experiences of having to learn a new language, get new jobs, and raise their children in a different land. They eventually began to assimilate and saw that their common experience was important not only to themselves, but to the rest of the world. And so they formally established the Kol Israel Foundation, which at first was a social organization for get-togethers and parties, but then with the outlook of preserving the memory of the Holocaust and furthering the goal of never again by supporting the emerging state of Israel, making donations to the cause, providing aid both financially and in spirit by political action locally and generally supporting Jews throughout the diaspora. However, when it came to the obligation of remembering their lost loved ones as it is set out in Jewish tradition, one thing was missing, the ability to go to the graves of their parents, siblings, and other lost family members in order to mourn and recite the memorial prayers as any other Jew could do because there were no graves, especially between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And so it was agreed to establish this monument. The founders obtained ashes from the concentration camps of Europe and incorporated them into the foundation of the marble, burying them here for eternity. As stated, the original monument was built in 1961, and as you know, it has the names of the lost loved ones of the original Kol Israel members. Over the years, Kol Israel had to expand the monument, and the great circular wall you see was added to accommodate additional names of loved ones lost in the Holocaust and other survivors who have since passed away. It is truly a great tribute to the memory of our dear departed families and friends here in the Cleveland area. Fittingly, each year at this time, there has been a memorial service held here and has been attended by hundreds of survivors and their friends and families to recite the memorial prayers, fulfilling the obligation to remember. As stated by Avi, and as you may be aware, I'm the memorial co-chairman, a position inherited from my father, Herman Frank, who has served as co-chair before me with, along with Simon Fixler. When my dad passed away, I gladly agreed to assume that position and have done so for about 10 years or so, along with my current co-chair, Avi Goldman. After doing a bit of research and having seen many historical markers around the city and state and all across the country, I proposed to the Cole Israel Foundation that we seek some historic recognition for the monument so that others, unaware of its existence, could learn about it and visit it when in the area. Initially, I sought out the mayor of Bedford Heights, Fletcher Berger, who's present today, and Leo Silberman and I scheduled a meeting with him to discuss the monument. Although he had never met a Holocaust survivor and was really not aware that the monument even existed in his city, he was very welcoming and supportive of the idea and pledged his assistance. The Bedford Heights City Council has recently passed a resolution declaring this monument as a historical site in their city. Also, Mayor Berger introduced us to Andrew and Dana Mizak of the Bedford Historical Society, who championed our cause to the Ohio History Connection and helped us to obtain recognition of the monument as a historic site and provided the historical marker which we are dedicating today. Hopefully, establishing the monument as a national historic site will be next. I must also thank and acknowledge the Bramson family, the owners of Zion Memorial Park, 
for their constant support and dedication to the monument going all the way back to Jay Bramson, who originally granted Cole Israel this site for the monument. Further, this event could not be happening without the continued support of the Jewish Federation and its leaders, including Gary Gross, who is here today. I also want to thank the Jewish War Veterans for their support and participation in this ceremony from its beginnings as well, and the clergy in this area, and especially the committee members assisting today. Uh, I also want to acknowledge all the public officials who came here to witness the special dedication ceremony and who have provided their support of Kol Israel in this cause over the many years. Some have brought pop proclamations and resolutions, which hopefully you can view later as you, on the, uh, the table as you depart. Here today are Dustin Russell from Ohio Governor Kasich's office, Ohio Senator Matt Dolan, Ohio State Senator Sandra Williams, Ohio State Representative Janine Boyd, Ohio State Representative John E. Barnes Jr., Ohio State Representative Nikki J. Antonio, the Honorable Judge Michelle Paris, the Honorable Judge Gail Williams Byers, Beachwood Mayor Merle Gordon, Shaker Heights Mayor Earl Lichen, Councilman Ed Eikhoff from South Euclid, and lastly but not least, Flair, Mayor Fletcher Berger of Bedford Heights. I really appreciate you all being here. And now I have the honor to introduce Becky Trevison of the Ohio History Connection. We'll have a few words before we unveil the historic marker. Becky Trevison. 